Hi everyone, I am just going to be talking through um, the student schedule in our required continuous learning um, or our remote um, setting for students. So um, we have been preparing students for the possibility of being in that required continuous learning model. And we've really just wanted to prepare them with the skills and information that they need to be able to access their classes from home. So we have been having conversations with students about the possibility and going over what their schedule would look like. So I am just gonna review um, that student schedule with you so that you can also see um, the learning that your students will be involved in in that learning model. And your student also has a copy of their own individual schedule that can be accessed through their Google Drive or through their advisory Google Classroom. It is located in both places if you would like to look at that, print it out um, so that you have a hard copy or a visual for your student. So the first thing that I will point out is that um, the blue highlighted boxes means that students are in live class sessions with their teachers. Those are required class times that students will need to be in attendance for, and it does follow their current schedule. So they're saying period one, two, three, and four, and you can note the time um, that those start and end on the schedule. Those classes, periods one through four, are live and required on Mondays and Thursdays. And then you can see that periods five, six, seven, eight in advisory are live classes that are required on Tuesdays and Fridays. The other boxes that you see are these white boxes. Those are um, times for students to work independently on asynchronous work, but you can also see that we are offering each period a help session. So if I have math first period, then on my asynchronous day, there will be a math help session that I can attend to still have that teacher support and that teacher contact. So that will be available for all students on their asynchronous times in these white boxes that are on the schedule. Notice that Wednesdays are at home um, asynchronous work time for students. Um, there are not office hours on Wednesdays due to teacher planning and preparation for remote learning. I'm gonna show you an example schedule so that you can see what it looks like when it's filled out. So you can see the sequence of a student's day. I did use a student example from 6G team. So please know that your student schedule will look specific to their um, team and their classes. So this is just the morning portion of this student schedule. I wanted to break it down to, for you so you could see uh, chunks at a time. So this student has Ms. Chambers first period, Mr. Lapka second period, Mr. Anderson third period on A days, and Mr. Phillips for fourth period literacy. So notice that these are live in-person class sessions. The links for these classes are in each uh, Google Classroom for these teachers. Then notice on the opposite days, Tuesdays and Fridays, there are help sessions that are held at the exact same time. So if I'm in Ms. Chambers first period class, my first period help session is on those other days at the same time. So these white boxes, again, they are optional. They are not required. Also, if a student jumps on to a help session at 825 and they only need 10 minutes of help, then they can jump right off. If a kid jumps on at 845 and they need, you know, 10 or 15 minutes of help, they can then jump right off. So it's not that it's required time and it's not that they have to stay the entire period. This is an opportunity for students to log in and get any support and help that they need. So again, the blue boxes here are required live class sessions where um, teachers are doing instruction. And the, whoops, the white boxes are optional for students to attend for either the whole time or portions of the time. And these are help sessions where they can have some contact with teachers for any assignment support. You will notice that same as our hybrid, A days are on Mondays and Tuesdays, and B days are on Thursdays and Fridays. So this specific student has an A day class with choir with Mr. Anderson, so that class meets on Mondays with the help session on Tuesdays for third period A day. And then they have study hall with Ms. Olmsted on Thursdays, which is their B day, and they have their help session um, on Friday, which is that third period B day. So our A day, B day classes would be PE, health, choir, band, study hall, core plus more. Um, those are the primarily the A day, B day um, classes that follow that schedule. So looking at the afternoon, you can see that it is a little bit different. So Monday periods five through eight, those classes are asynchronous. So again, those help sessions are optional. 
teachers will be available during these class periods. So if I have sixth period science with Mr. Christensen, my sixth period class on those uh, Mondays and Thursdays are when I could go and get some science support. So again, they don't have to stay the whole time. They don't have to be there at, exactly at 105. They can jump in and out at any time during these, um, this time period. Um, I will point out another A day, B day class on here. So PE, this student has PE with Mr. Schoen, eighth period A days. Notice that that is on Tuesdays. The help session for PE would be on that Monday A day. Health, this student has Ms. Cogdell, um, eighth period B days. So notice that that class here is on Fridays and uh, they have the help session here on that Thursday, which is the B day. We also have advisory for students on Tuesdays and Fridays. Those are times that students will get on to be able to do some check-ins with their advisory teacher. Um, this is a really great opportunity for teachers to check in with students, see how they are doing, provide some socializing opportunities for them with their advisory peers, um, such as games, um, even just some discussions. And so advisory is required on those Tuesdays and Fridays from that 3.20 to 3.40 time period. A couple of things, just I've already stated this about the help sessions, but just to go over it again, help sessions are geared toward the same period students. So if I have period one world regions with Ms. Chambers, I would attend her period one help session. Um, so teachers are using the same link that they use on their in-person live class days, their synchronous days for those help sessions. So there's not different links for that. Those links can be accessed through Google Classroom and it is the same link whether they are live in person or whether it's asynchronous in a help session. This is a great opportunity for students to seek support from their teachers during these times and have that additional teacher contact. Study hall is another question that has come up pretty consistently from students. Students will not have a live synchronous class session for study hall. If a student has study hall that is some independent work time for them, they do not need to jump onto a Zoom or a Google Meet for study hall. Um, content area teachers can be available during those times um, during support uh, to support during help sessions. So that is where students should go to get any support from teachers is during the um, help session that they have with that teacher. Otherwise, study hall is just a chunk of time that they will be able to independently work on some assignments. And that is the information that we shared with students about student schedules. Um, we will be putting out additional videos specifically about some student expectations or netiquette during remote learning time, um, a Google Classroom tutorial so that you can kind of see the ins and outs of Google Classroom and how to navigate that with your student. Um, and we'll also be putting out an attendance video just to show you the difference in attendance during this remote learning time. Um, and so that you kind of uh, understand the differences in the um, requirements for students to be present and any of the check-in uh, the check-in procedures. So if you have questions about anything that was shared today, you can reach out to your advisory teacher, your student's counselor, or to one of our administrators, and we would be happy to help you. Thank you so much.